Okay, on this slide, I'm going to show you how we're actually going to compute that activity coefficient. And there was a theory that was developed by these two guys, Debye and Huckel, and it is a very beautiful, elegant theory that I like very much, but like uh, the Born model, it's too involved to explain exactly how we get it in this class. So I'm just giving you the result now, and perhaps some of you will go on to learn exactly where it comes from and why Debye and Huckle found it in the first place. But I'm going to present you the mathematical formula that they found for this gamma plus minus, this activity coefficient, and then we'll get some practice actually using it, because uh, no doubt this knowledge will come in handy if you go to graduate school and you take or teach any sort of physical chemistry course. Okay, so the uh, activity coefficient is actually expressed in terms of its logarithm, and there's a numerical constant out here in front, and it's multiplied times the absolute value of the positive ions charge and the negative ions charge multiplied together multiplied times the square root of that ionic strength. And this one is valid at standard conditions. <clears throat> if we were running this model at a different temperature or pressure, then we would need to change that number. We would need to recalculate that. And that formula appears in the book. The debye huckel theory is still just an entry point for more sophisticated theories. And it's actually rather inaccurate compared to a lot of other ones that exist. However, like I said, it's a good starting point and, it wor and people still use it probably more than any other electrolyte theory. So it's worth learning about anyways. It, uh, by the way, it doesn't work it, or rather, it works worse for um, large concentrations and large ionic charges. So for large Z pluses and Z minuses, it really doesn't work very well. So now I'm going to give you some uh, formulas that are involved with chemical equilibria. And I'm going to start with a salt solution, and then we'll get to an acid solution. So the KSP, where SP stands for solubility product, tells us the degree of dissociation of an ionic substance. Because if an ionic substance dissociates, then that means that it has dissolved into the aqueous solution. And that is, again, this big pi, which means a multiplication of all the terms i. And then we have our activity and our stoichiometric coefficients. And then if I just break this down for a, uh, um, for a two ion electrolyte, this just becomes this gamma plus minus to that new power. And then we're back to concentration again. The book decided to use concentration for this part instead of molality. You probably have whiplash from all the exchanges we keep having back and forth between concentration and molality. And uh, I feel your pain, but there's just nothing for it. And plus, we've got to be uh, versatile and be able to deal with concentration or molality as the situation arises in the real world. Okay? And uh, by the way, this just equals gamma plus minus nu, which you would calculate, say, using the debye huckel theory, concentration of the positive ion, standard concentration, which is, remember, one mole per liter, and then nu of the positive ion, C minus C naught, nu of the negative ion. Now for acids, <clears throat> we've got an acid dissociation constant. This is called a 
dissociation constant. And this equals our activity coefficient squared, the molality, we're back to molality again, of H plus times the molality of A minus, and A minus is the acid anion, all over the molality of the intact acid, okay? I think I'm going to dedicate the next video to doing a sample problem involving the dissociation constant of an acid.